right, so we just had a quick break there. Um, but next yeah. up, we've got Dan Methvin, who's going to talk to us all the way from the UK. Uh, he's the head of online learning at AngloLearn, um, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about how he shares Quizlet with other teachers and his experience with doing that. Uh, so if you want to take it away now, Dan, go for it. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Quizlet for hosting this amazing two days, particularly Claire, who's been super helpful with me and I guess all the other presenters as well. Um, a little bit of background. My name is Dan Hi. Um, I am 50 next year, which I think means half of my life <laughs> I would have spent as a teacher, which is pretty mind blowing. I've been teaching technology since 2009. Um, I've taught thousands of teachers, I've tried to teach thousands of teachers technology. Um, a little bit of background about what I do at the moment and how I teach it, it'll help um, you to understand sort of like later on. Um, I teach a course called Technology in Teaching and basically it's an EU funded course and what that means is that within the European Union teachers from all over from every country can apply from wherever they are to the eu to study on a course in another country and become a better teacher and if they are successful and if they get funding then they come to see me um in you can see the picture hopefully that's where you know where i work and where i live um, in the north of england um and so over the past nearly 10 years I've been presenting Quizlet the old logo is there the one that I used to you know that, that Quizlet started with and um, it's one of the very few tools that I've used throughout the whole of my nine slash ten years um, there's a couple of others some have come and some have gone and um, some are not as good as they used to be some of them are not free anymore but Quizlet is one of the you know the go-to um, apps that I've always used um more and more teachers now know it anyway it used to be a mystery back in the day back in the beginning no teachers had heard of any of these apps at all but um more and more people nowadays have heard of um quizlet so what i do basically is i get a bunch of teachers from all over the eu all manner and and beyond i've got a chinese student at the moment in venezuelan as well and they're all at very different levels. And what I find is that the teachers who already know what to do and know how to do it, they kind of do it anyway. I'm sure you've got colleagues and friends like that, people who you can think of now who all you have to say to them is Quizlet and they will go away and they will look for themselves. But the real problem or the real difficulty, the challenge lies with those who aren't so adept and aren't so good. And I think um, in my experience, um, it's a challenge to get these people to, to get on board with any technology. Quizlet is a great thing for people to start with, but it's difficult to get these people started. And what I want to spend the sort of like next 20 minutes doing is giving you a few ideas about how you could, if you're faced with the prospect, uh, the dilemma of trying to introduce technology to people who don't usually use technology, how you can go about that and encourage that. There's a lot of uh, barriers and boundaries for people. They've got mental blocks about it, maybe even like getting close to a phobia about technology. And some of the people who come to visit me, they're sent they haven't chosen they're sent by their school because let's say their school in belarus or france or whatever they know they need technology you know every school knows it needs it so they send someone who's reluctant and my job is to try to convince them that it's a good thing to do so i'm going to hopefully give you some tips um i'd be really interested to know i can only see my screen at the moment but in my experience nearly every school that I see of course I see a representative from that school uh, but there's a disparity in that school where there's the people who do use technology and the people that don't and I'm just very curious I think most people are watching from the US I'd be really interested to find out if you have that disparity in your school as well whether there's kind of it's on the next slide I think if you just look at the next slide for a second So would you say, say, I can't see it at the moment, but hopefully if you could write into the comments or the questions whether or not you feel that your school is quite equal and that everybody uses technology or whether you feel that there is this divide which you can see sort of on the slide now where at the bottom as we can see, you know, the people who are comfortable with technology simply get better and better, which is, you know, it's great. Um, but, you know, the others get left behind and of course the gap 
just grows and grows and grows as those who can tuck their tablets and their laptops under their arms and race off into the sunset. And it's not a good thing. This is not good for our schools. It's not good for our students. Divisions could be created within the staff room. Students could, become to pre could come to prefer one teacher over another. And so I'd like to try and close this gap if possible and get more people on board. Of course, it would be great if more people used Quizlet. That's why we're here. But just technology as a whole, we need to try to get over some of these phobias and, and um, misconceptions or um, fears that some teachers have. So hopefully people have written um, in the comments whether or not um, you have a disparity in your school. I say, I know that in, in Europe, you know, I know for sure that there is this um, disparity. So we're going to try to bring us closer together. I've based this, if you, if you see the numbers, I've based this on like, so like three 20 minutes. This, I mean, the last one maybe is flexible, that number two at the bottom, it says two hand holding. We'll come back to that later. That might actually be longer than 20 minutes. But in my experience, what teachers really need to do is to get their problems off their chest. They may feel I just mentioned a couple of them, confused, afraid, discouraged, um, they may have ostracized. People, teachers come with all sorts of worries and baggage about technology if they're not using it. To change this, it doesn't take a great deal, it's just a change of mindset. They don't need to become experts, but they need to be able to think that they can do it rather than can't do it. And in a way, that's a very small thing, but also in a way, it's kind of a huge thing to change someone's like mindset in a way is not a big thing, but I think it's very possible. I think that we can do it. So these on the next slide are some of the sort of like things that teachers say when they come to me. You may recognize some of them. And so bring your teachers you know the group that you're, you're teaching into into a classroom i wouldn't do it in a computer room for reasons that i'll come to i'd do this in a classroom with an interactive whiteboard in it get them sat down and just let them have a chat um, i've got some questions um this is what i usually use to start things off if the teachers do have misgivings it will only take a matter of seconds before they start pouring it all out because it's built up this pressure about technology and it may be excuse me for jumping around a little bit if we look at the first one, this is an experienced teacher and they're feeling threatened by the younger generation. Usually, usually, you know, um, stereotypically, older teachers, of course, digital immigrants are not as good as technology as the younger teachers, you know, generally. Um, so what that sentence actually means is I'm feeling threatened and we need to see beyond this question. We don't need to have an answer but we need to let teachers have the opportunity just to air what they're feeling, to let all that pressure out. So then they'll be in a much better position. We'll be starting at zero with them rather than minus 350. And you can see some of the other ones, it'll probably break. This is the teacher feeling sort of like nervous and, and um, unconfident about their own abilities. At the bottom, if a teacher says, but you know, I had a really bad experience and it, it didn't work. I mean, there's no answer to that. You can't say, oh, well, you should have done this or you should have done that. We know that th these problems occur, but you just say to the teacher, yeah, I know, I know that's really bad if that happens and I would feel really embarrassed too. It's happened to me too. And it just takes that pressure away. So as I say, it's great to let them air their, you know, grievances, whatever you want to call them, their, their misconceptions or their misgivings. Go out of the room, by all means, just leave them, put them into little groups, like groups of two or three, go out, say, I'm going to come back in five or ten minutes and let them have a good talk. You haven't got to give all of the answers. You haven't got to provide them with a list of sort of, and tick them all off. It's just a simple matter of getting these out. I find personally that then, as I said, you're starting from the beginning rather than starting from sort of like, you know, a, dark, a darker place. Um, so once again, these are the questions that I use and just let them have a chat, you know, just let them talk about it. Just sort of like try to reassure them and encourage them, you know, it's all going to be okay. And, uh, you know, generally teachers know that they should be using technology i think most of them nearly all of them they would like to try but they become block block somehow and it's our job as experienced 
tech users to bring them on board and you know get them to be part of our tech team um, really you know in a way it's, it's crucial and it's really vital we can't have this imbalance in our schools it's our job it's our responsibility to get these people with us i think it's easy to leave them you know you know they don't know and we know so let's go for a coffee you know but, but we have to work hard we're educators and we need to educate the, the sort of have nots you know we're the haves in this situation so if we just jump back again, um, that's the first bit done, the air and the grievances and the misgivings. The training, you've maybe only got one chance, so don't blow it. Some, potentially, I have had the situation where teachers have just been waiting for me to fail. Um, they want to prove that it doesn't work. They're desperate. <laughs> See, told you, knew it wouldn't work. And then they can carry on with whatever it is, you know, with not using technology. So get everything prepped. I know you would do this anyway, but double check everything. Because in this, you know, we maybe only have one chance. I mean, it's not a very, you know, it's not a very good attitude towards life that we've only got one chance. But it's so much harder to get them back. You know, I tried once before. I went to the session with Dan and it didn't work. And I knew it wouldn't work. So, excuse my French get your shit together, you know, before you start, get everything queued up, run through it, make it run like clockwork. Because if you start umming and ahhing, imagine how they will feel both about the whole process, but also you're the expert and you can't do it. So, you know, how could I ever do it? Um, the reason I said keep it in a classroom is because the worst thing you can do at this point, once they've had their grievances, is let them all go wild on laptops or on, you know, on, on um, PCs. You'll have half the people logged in, half the people not logged in, some people with their mouses upside down wondering why the cursor is moving the wrong way. Other people somehow will have logged into their Gmail and will have photos of their nieces and nephews to show everyone. Um, and other people will have inadvertently switched the whole machine off. It honestly will be chaos. It's much better for you to do a kind of old-fashioned chalk and talk from the front and take them through with you loads of time for questions take it nice and steady encourage them to make notes you could print out i've got one actually i haven't got it here but i'm um, a little bullet point sheet of, of what you're actually going to do so they can annotate that as you go through and um you know just say take it baby steps take it very slowly i've got 20 minutes there and when you see actually what i'm going to show from quizlet is for us like two or three minutes really it's basically just getting in and getting on and getting a very basic set done. So um, plenty of time. So we're going to go uh, and have a look um, at um, the website. You'll notice that I'm not logged in. That is not because I've forgotten. That's because if you start logged in, they'll be lost already. They're already, you've got no idea, potentially. You might not know people like this. You might be thinking, well, of course, everyone knows how to log in. I have met hundreds of people who have absolutely no idea if you start inside how you got inside. And hopefully, if we start at google.com, there's a chance, you know, that we can all sort of get on board together. So then you're going to have to talk them through the sort of signing up process. They may not really have done that very much. So you're going to have to point out about passwords and things and take your time with that. So obviously they'll be, log they'll be um, signing up, of course. Hopefully I'll be logging in. So once you're in, hey presto, you know, point out, you can say in the top right hand corner, look, there's my picture and there's my name. I'm in, you know, just like you're into your email. Um, they will be confronted with this page. And I don't think I'm exaggerating. To them, it will look like this. If you can see that, that is what <laughs> that is what it will look like. Completely bamboozled. And I see this week in, week out. This is just my experience. You may think like, like I'm making this up or I'm exaggerating or maybe you live in a very like tech savvy um, environment but for me this is pretty much what teachers see and I am not by any stretch of the imagination criticizing the Quizlet layout it's gorgeous but it does take some familiarization and for people who aren't used to it this is like an impossible maze so I always tell them to click on create first look for the create button um, search in my humble opinion, 
I've heard, you know, from Quizlet in the past couple of days that search is going to improve and it's going to become more accurate and get paid sets. Searching on the internet is an art and is a skill, uh, whether you, you know, whether we're aware of that or not. To search well and effectively is the skill. And if the group of teachers from your school who don't like technology don't search, don't, <laughs> don't let them search. Um, they could easily go around in circles for, for an hour or two. And as we know, we can make a set in half that time. Um, so really going, they may ask about it and point it out to them, but of course as well, it could be have mistakes in, or they may not be aware that when they put in Italy, they might get something about Romeo and Juliet from Shakespeare and it just like blow their mind. So you may be open, opening Pandora's box by encouraging them to go down the search road. I would always go for create because then we know where we are and we know what we've got. So log in, show them that you're logged in and hit the create button we need a title of course i don't know if i'm if i'm you know i'm sure people have gone over this already in the past sort of like uh, you know a couple of days but just uh, very quickly outline i usually go for days of the week because of course it's a set of seven and um it's easy to use the translate thing and you know it, like it's a confined set so we need a title of course oh and look here we are um, here's some I prepared earlier so we can see Monday show them that you can put it into a different language um, show them that there's a possibility to add um, an image I wouldn't take it much further what I would do as we add cards is get them up um, to you know come on up you come Anna and Anna comes up and adds Wednesday and translates it into maybe her language I know I don't know if you've ever tried it. If you put all different languages into Quizlet on the other side, on the right-hand side as the definitions, it confuses, <laughs> it confuses Quizlet. And when you do the flashcards, it doesn't quite know which language it's in. So it's not something that I would encourage, but just as you're setting up this demo set, you can just show people that their language is there as well. There's beautiful, you know, as, as I'm sure you know, so many languages there, um, you know, Slovakian and, you know, Russian and all the languages. I've never known a language not to be there, which for teachers from the smaller parts of the EU, it's very heartwarming for them. So sooner or later, we've created our full set. <laughs> Three days later, we've got our seven um, words. And as you can see, I didn't realize I was going to be, you know, have the pleasure to do this. I recently cleared out my Quizlet. They went, I had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And just my luck, after nine years, I cleared it out like about two weeks ago. You can see it goes back to 2015. And you can see I've got days of the week, days, days of the week, days of the week. And like I say, this is the sort of set that I normally go with. So if we click on here. What I would do next once we've created our set is I wouldn't do learn to begin with because learn is like an I'm sure um, you know learn is an amalgamation amalgamation of other parts of Quizlet and live of course is excuse me that's people outside my window shouting um, I would stick with <laughs> flashcards write spell test and match they are pretty self-explanatory even to our tech uh immigrants uh, flashcards write spell and test they speak for themselves really uh, they do need to be demonstrated you do need to click on them but just a couple of goes on each i would spend some time on match because it's the gamification it's the fun part which hopefully is the whole reason that we're doing this why monday here has got a pair of shoes on i'm not sure um it's a little bit cryptic i have no idea why there's shoes in is it italian for monday but anyway um get different teachers up get them to play a little bit just to see that they can have a go they will be very reluctant they will feel that they're going to break it but one teacher usually comes up and has a go and they say to the others it's all right nobody died um and then you may get another one up and of course the best time here on the left which i think you can see ticking away this best time over here they can all try and beat that and suddenly you know like their inhibitions start to sort of melt away and you can see themselves starting to enjoy themselves and think maybe this technology is not so bad after all so what, what we've done up to now is we've logged in we've created a set we've gone to create we've created a set of seven we've gone through not every function but we've gone through the sort of all of the different main functions which is I've, I've, not the first one 
and not the last one. The only other thing that I would point out at this stage, obviously you're answering questions all the time and, you know, can I share this with another teacher, etc. And, you know, I mean, by this time, maybe if you don't know, it's not so bad. I mean, they're coming on board and they're getting with the program. So that, their questions now are becoming more intuitive. And so you may not, you know, know all of the answers because they're actually quite clever questions all of a sudden. But the main question that they're going to have is, basically how do I get this out there so you know what happens do my students have to come and sit at my desk you know that literally how do I get this from me to them and of course we're clicking on the sort of share arrow and we're showing them the link and what I normally do is copy the copy the link and then log out of here so they can actually see so take myself out and paste this link in and look at it back from the other view and point out really plainly up here you can see that no one's logged in you can see no one signed up your name is here as the teacher and they can still play the game and the penny sort of starts to drop with them a little bit um and basically that's it it doesn't seem like much i mean we really have i know i know we've just scratched the surface but if i put this back up again and imagine me and you doing this chinese for an hour or 25 minutes that's probably enough i you know i've only, i've got a small capacity for chinese it's just the same for them so we have to be patient keep on the lookout they will start to glaze over um i didn't mention sorry we went we 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 went from the demonstration when we went in we went to like obviously to a computer room where we got the lap laptops out sorry i forgot to say that between sort of like stage two and stage three what you're doing while they're logging in and signing up is running around and sort of like reassuring them helping them sort of like firefighting really um of course you know i know this is obvious but staying patient staying calm showing them again and um they will get frustrated and they will <laughs> they maybe will start to get annoyed they will start to get annoyed it's annoying when you can't do something think of something that you can't do you try and do it <laughs> so be calm with them and be patient they'll be okay they'll be okay reassure them as much as you can and what will happen is sooner or later they will have made a set and they'll start to tap their friend and say Come look look you know look what i've done it's amazing a lot of the time these are older people and as i said i'm 50 soon and as older people we don't learn new things very much it doesn't happen very often we do the things we do we don't often take up a new sport um, or a new hobby and so we don't often have this kind of like childlike pleasure of learning something new for the first time and you see it when these people who don't like technology start to get it and the look on their face is the honestly it's a really beautiful smile when they think my god i think i might actually be able to do this and that is where we want them to be that's all it is getting them from feeling that they can't to feeling that they can they don't realize there's a really long way to go <laughs> and an awful lot to do um, to become very competent in various tools but if we can get them from believing that they can't to believing that they can what a day you know what an achievement um, what a, what a great thing to do you know to spend an afternoon with the group and managing to do that to turn them around and as a teacher you know it's very empowering for them too so if we just jump back to um the presentation um i said before there's the 20 here i think that's true there's the 20 here where you demo it in front of them. I think that's true. This third one, which is where we go to the computer room, that might be a bit optimistic. <laughs> it may need a zero adding on to the end of it. I am, I'm not being disrespectful. Um, these are great, great people. But I've seen the problems that we've had. And, and some people, at the end of 20 minutes they're not logged in yet they're not even signed up yet um so that may be 40 minutes 60 minutes it may be another session you know where you take it to you and in the next session you start back at you do the demo again and go through it again but you know patience is a virtue and you know slowly but surely um we can get these people on board and our schools you know can become better schools and we won't have this divide um that i believe sort of exists certainly exists as i say in europe i think most people who are watching are in the us so i can't speak i i, I don't teach americans so much because you already speak english you see
the for any Europeans out there, the you, the EU program where you apply for money is called. Erasmus Plus. It's running until 2020 in its current form. This link here, if you can see, it says creating opportunity for the UK. That's just because I'm in the UK, so my link is a UK link. If you look at this uh, from um, Latvia, it will have Latvia there and not the UK. Uh, and if you click the if you click the link, um, all these links will be available. I mean, of course, um, anything you want, um, I'll provide. Obviously, and you can see here apply for staff mobility funding and that's where you would go to to start your journey um, this is my school um, anglolang um, there's the course on there it should come in a minute it takes a second um, it takes three seconds five seconds um, this is the computer room and these are my beautiful students um, you see they were afraid just 48 hours before. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's, there's, there's lots of info on there as well. So that's my school, um, Anglerlang. And then last but not least, in my free time, I run a podcast with my American friend called Jennifer from San Diego. And every Friday, it's um, chat, fun, and language improvement. What more could you want? That's my email address at the bottom. It's been a real pleasure and a privilege, I think, to almost close out this um, unconference. Obviously, if there's any questions, I hope it's been useful. And just remember, you know, be kind and be patient, and hopefully we can get more people on board and more of us can become comfortable and confident uh, with technology because we, we need to be. We can't have this disparity, which I certainly see on a daily basis. So thank you for your time. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dan. We've got lots of comments coming in and people echoing, you know, the things that you've said about like the technology divide and really bridging that gap. Uh, yeah. So I think you're definitely right with, you know, not just this being in the UK, but also being something right. that's really relevant to a lot of people. Um, good, so good. people are really applauding you for your patience and really appreciated that talk. So thanks Yay. so much. Pleasure. Uh, yeah, so now that we're uh, wrapping up the rest of the day, I'm going to send it over to Eric, who's our head of community here at Quizlet, and he's going to really wrap things up by sharing the rest of the resources we have for you guys um, and just finishing off the day. So let me share my screen. Cool. Hello, all. Make sure this thing focuses on me. <clears throat> uh, I'm the community manager here and I'm focused on content, um, but really the first thing I'm focused on is our ambassador program. And I know that some people here are probably ambassadors that have joined us. Um, and <clears throat> up here you'll see Colby Chambers. Uh, he's one of the people who presented today. And um, he had, uh, um, he, he's, uh, he's one of these ambassadors and basically it's just a group we love to spread the word. Uh, we know from talking to teachers that word of mouth is the main way people discover Quizlet, or teachers do at least. And so we know that's really important. So we like to connect with those people, you know, people who are often very social media savvy. And we do that um, through this program. And we have previously just had this program and we send out a newsletter, but we wanted to create some kind of community space and we thought long and hard about what that should be, but we really wanted to do something really lightweight that didn't have the, yet another social network program problem where you have to sign up and go do all these things. So we wanted to just start with something simple like a Facebook group. So we now have just opened up about a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago, the Ambassador Club. It's a private Facebook club. It's just for ambassadors. Uh, once you sign up, uh, if you want to sign up to be an ambassador, we'll send you a link to get into that club. But we don't let anybody else in because we want to keep it just a, a place for them to go and share things and you know have candid conversations or whatever they need to talk about, whatever they want to talk about. But I also do send out a newsletter um, every couple of weeks. Uh, maybe we highlight some of the conversations. Maybe we talk about product details, things that are coming up. If we have a discount or something going special going on, maybe we can, we'll share that with ambassadors first, basically. But uh, I'll give you a couple of ideas of some of the questions, uh, uh, some of the conversations that have happened already uh, some of my favorite ones that I saw just in the last couple of weeks was uh, Alexandra's first teach meet. She talked about how she, you know, um, created, uh, uh, you know, basically attended and ran her first teach meet. And um, 
she had 50 people and somehow got her IT folks to set up 50 laptops in a row, which I really would have loved to see. <laughs> um, and they, uh, you know, did things like play Quizlet Live. Uh, Jessica had a great conversation about a crossword puzzle hack that she uses. She takes um, vocabulary terms and exports them out of Quizlet and into this crossword puzzle maker generator online, which is, uh, and then outputs that for her students. And that's like extra credit for them. So that's another great way. And that's the kind of thing that we see in this uh, in these discussions is you know alternate ways to play quiz alive variants. I'm always collecting those. Uh, if anybody has any, I love hearing about them, and teachers love hearing about them as well. Another great conversation. Adriana in Brazil talked about how she uh, kept visiting a doorman who wanted to learn English, so she set him up with Quizlet, and over time, as she kept visiting him again and again, he got better and better at it. So those are the kind of like stories we just love to hear. So uh, that's a great place for us to get together and talk about those things. Um, beyond the Ambassador Club, what I'm working on right now is creating some videos. Um, I've got like a five part how-to video series. It's pretty, pretty, you know, stripped down and basic. The, the same kind of stuff that Dan was talking about, you know, sometimes if you want to send a a teacher to resources if, if you for example wanted to recommend it if you could just send them to a page that had you know five videos to show you how to get started in a really simple and basic way that would be really useful so working on that also um, working on some content about leading a personal development session so maybe a flyer template uh, a, an invitation template to send out to people uh, they call them teach meets in the UK but they might call them something different where you are um, some Google slide presentations Things that we know that ambassadors need to ha have a better, to run their own PD session. So if that's the kind of thing that interests you, uh, the ambassador program might be something you're interested in. Uh, it's not for everyone. We're not trying to grow it to this giant level. We just really want people that are really committed to, you know, telling other teachers about it. Um, people who can, you know, follow us on social media, help amplify the things that we uh, messages we want to get out, but also amplify messages that they want to get out too. So I, I, I try to make sure I'm following as many people as possible, uh, either on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, and and really connecting with people. Keep the keep a tight line of communication with these folks. And then uh, ordering a bunch of new swag like enamel pins. I just got some uh, some little pins here. These aren't enamel ones, but I'm going to order some enamel ones. And ultimately, I'd like to get to a point where I'm able to send out some of these resources to a teacher who's going to run a PD session. Uh, so I, I, I'm working on that now, and, and the real challenge is to figure out how to best meet people, people's needs internationally, because we have a lot of teachers around the world, and uh, this uh, ambassador group is definitely full of a lot of people who uh, you know, are in far-flung place, far places, and so it's a great way for me to learn how educational systems are run you know, in other countries, so if that's the kind of thing that sounds good to you, I would encourage you to uh, type in Google, um, in Google type in you know, Quizlet Ambassador Program and you'll probably see that page right away and you can sign up and we'll get you set up in there. I just wanted to call out a couple of my favorite moments that we've seen or submit moments that we collected uh, throughout this conference last few days on social media. I just love seeing the things that people <laughs> posted, especially uh, Ms. Uffelman, who uh, bribed her uh, children with snacks so that she could listen. Uh, Nathan had a great tweet about um, how cal calm and cool he was until he saw that there were about a thousand people waiting for his presentation. <laughs> and then um, uh, someone wrote a blog post in the first two hours and posted it, um, showing some of the things that they do with uh, Quizlet, which I, I just really love. And then finally, someone got the uh, worst time zone uh, award. Uh, Adriana in Malaysia started watching at 3.30 in the morning. So we really want to thank you so much for all the enthusiasm that you've had shared, you know, being here and spending the time. And uh, personally, I, we just wanted to also thank, you know, Dan for sharing with teachers uh, presentation, Patrick McMillan for all those great Quizlet variants. I've got it actually a blog post uh, uh, collecting Quizlet live variants or Quizlet variants. If you've got some, uh, go on our blog and fill out that form and tell me about it and I can share it with other people and follow us on Twitter, Facebook. We'll, we share those kinds of uh, details as we collect them from teachers. Stephanie Sheridan for those great game variations. Courtney Osborne talking about Quizlet teacher. Amalia here uh, from Quizlet. Always spectacular to hear from her. She's 
knows so much about the product and her intro to Quizlet is, uh, uh, you know, super comprehensive. Colby, thank you so much for talking about Google, Google Classroom. I, Classroom, I saw so many people on Twitter talking about that. Uh, everyone loves the combination of Google Classroom and Quizlet, and we do too. Uh, Jessica, thank you so much for the Quizlet Live, and especially for the Quizlet Diagram Talk. So many people I saw say, you know, I didn't even really explore diagrams or didn't even really use it. I definitely want to make sure to use it with that. Uh, Nathan Hall, everyone really loved your Taboo game. That's a spectacular one. I'm definitely going to have to collect that one and send that out to people. Michael uh, Sneed, the student success plans, I really enjoyed that. I could tell that, like, you really got uh, everyone in school or in your class or other teachers excited about using Quizlet. Melanie Miller, thank you for the challenges about how your students uh, struggle to get to the top of the mountain. I love that. I love that you have like a visual thing as well that they can follow along and compete and learn at the same time. And then finally, thanks Steve Wick for uh, talking about formative assessment, something we hear about a lot. And uh, finally, I, if you uh, wrote in during the chat and said that you have taken the Quizlet Live song and you've decided, taken to performing it in class on your ukulele. Uh, if you want to record that for me and send it to, and send it to our way, we would absolutely love that. We, we were dying to see someone play the ukulele and, and play that song. I have a ukulele, I'm not very good at it, but if I don't hear from you, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna be forced to break it out and try to figure out how to, how to play that song myself. Thank you again, I wanna turn it back over to um, Claire. And um, if you wanna get involved in Quizlet Ambassador, look it up. Connect with me and uh, we'll talk to you then. Cool. Awesome, guys. So with that, we're just going to wrap it up. I just want to say thank you once again for everyone who attended. Uh, we were really amazed to see the number of people who attended. I think yesterday we had like 1,600 people total. Um, and we're excited to see how many people also came as well today. Um, so with that, we're also going to be sending out all of you guys an email. So if you've been asking about where you can get your professional development certificate or where you can find these videos later on, any resources, we're going to send you out an email. Um, we're going to work on posting the videos as well of all the recordings. Um, and those will get up pretty soon. Um, and we'll email you once those are ready. Um, but definitely stay tuned for that email in your inbox to get your professional development certificate. Um, and lots of resources, and also um, you'll get an info on that discount that we talked about to Quizlet Teacher. In addition, I just have one thing to ask from you guys. We really want to make sure that the unconference, um, you know, when we run it again, is really helpful for you and that we are making sure that it's the best that it can be for you guys. Um, so please fill out a survey um, that will be going out in that email. We'd really appreciate to hear any feedback you have so we can really keep on improving. Uh, so with that, we hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your summer. If you're back at school, we hope you have a really great start to your school year. Um, all of us here at Quizlet are definitely cheering you on. So thanks again, everyone.